So this is the brand new Wahoo Kicker Run. And I've just finished my first hour of working out on it, first hour of running on it. And I gotta say, it is pretty darn impressive. It's got a bunch of new features, things that you've never seen before on a treadmill, both from a hardware standpoint, but also from an integration standpoint with apps like Zwift and other third-party apps. This includes features like tilting side to side to simulate road, terrain, and kind of the shift that you would have as you run across a trail. It also will dynamically change the pace automatically based on where you are in the belt. And probably the most amazing sensation is this right here. Going over the top of this edge, you naturally feel like you want to run faster. Like I'm just going faster because it feels I'm gonna fall down this cliff of a negative percent incline, but I didn't touch anything. And I'm gonna show you that in real time in a run here in just a second. Now note that this isn't a review video. In fact, this is just a prototype, though a very close to finished prototype, but there are some minor little things that you'll notice that would be indicative of a prototype, like the welds and some of the finishes aren't quite perfect. And we'll talk about the timelines and all that a little bit later on. So in this video, I'm gonna run through an actual run that I just finished up, but I'm also gonna kind of first go through all the components of the treadmill itself, starting at the base. As you can see, it is definitely a beast of a unit. Uh, its top speed is a four minute mile uh, or 15 miles per hour with the metric speeds on the screen right there. It's got a maximum gradient of 15% up and then negative 3% down. And that may not sound like a lot, but wait until you see what happens as I'm running down this hill because it's, it's pretty darn cool. From a belt length standpoint, it is 69 inches end to end, though the curve here happens at about 56 inches, and the belt width is about 22 inches wide. Moving up to the front here, you've got, of course, a support structure, but then at the very front, you have a laptop holder. This can hold up to a 17 inch laptop on the front there, and even have a strap that you can pull over that laptop so it doesn't go flying anywhere. Watch right here as I put this laptop on there, a beast of a laptop and go for a run. This entire front section is just a monster of metal and just bulk. It's not going anywhere at all. But inside of that, you've also got a tablet holder. You can see the tablet up here right now. It can hold a phone if you want to. And that all folds into this. And in fact, this entire front piece can be taken off as well. And then up top from a power standpoint, it's got up to an 18 watt charger USB-C for plugging things in. It does sound like that could potentially go higher than that. I would love to see them do at least 60 watts of charging for laptops. Uh, 60 watts would keep most laptops at relatively constant rate. I know obviously you can go much higher for that for beefier gaming laptops, but 60 laptops would be kind of that sweet spot. Now, looking at the console right here, you've got a couple things that are noteworthy. Uh, first off, you've got the incline right there, as well as your pace, instant pace right there. And then you've got a couple buttons right here. These buttons will eventually allow you to integrate with apps like Zwift, so you can kind of go through the menus and move around. You've got a stop button. You've got the run free button, which I'll get to in just a moment two water bottle holders, a safety clip, and then your increase in pace and increase and decrease as well in gradient. And again, I'll talk about those in just a second because they're pretty interesting in how it works. And then finally, on a spec standpoint, uh, this will run on both 110 as well as 220 power, but not the same unit on both of those. They will have two different SKUs, uh, primarily due to the actuators used up front that we'll get to in just a second, uh, having basically different power profiles. So let's start off one of the two crazy new features of this, which is the ability to tilt left and right. So you can tilt the entire platform left and right Right? basically giving you not only the ability to deal with floors that are not flat, but also the ability to kind of fake some sort of train changes, for example, banking around a corner. Uh, now the idea long-term, but perhaps not at launch, is that apps like Zwift could automatically introduce that slight bit of change up to 1.5% in either direction. But you can actually see it if you look from the back here, the profile, as I go left like this, or as I go right like this. Uh, and the way they can do that is instead of having just a single unit on the front that rises and lowers the entire front of the treadmill, it's actually got two separate legs for actuators so they can basically tilt them independently. Again, this helps introduce some of the variation that you would normally feel outdoors to a treadmill itself. But unquestionably, the coolest feature that you're going to see on this is the new run-free mode, or basically a way to automatically adjust the pace and speed of the treadmill just based on your position on the treadmill itself. The way it works is it's using this time of flight sensor just underneath the stop button right there, and it's essentially adjusting and looking at just below your hips. So basically the crotch shot, it's, it's monitoring my package and seeing where I am relative to this entire treadmill. So as I move forward on this, it'll automatically adjust, and it's adjusting incredibly fast. You'll see this in just a second out in the run, both going forward as well as pulling back. The way you activate this is just simply pressing this button right there. You can see it'll automatically turn that on. Because I'm not moving anywhere right now, it's, it's not gonna do that until I've started the treadmill itself so it doesn't have any like accidental sort of pace thing. And hey, just a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting and useful, now is a great time to whack that like button or the subscribe button. It really does help with the video and the channel quite a bit. Also, as a side note, I think they should ship every one of these with this doormat. Look how cool this is. It's like they're stepping onto a whole like experience right here like seals the deal.
Okay, so we're ready to start our first run, or actually like my second or third run. Uh, and the first thing to do to start it is just simply hit this right-hand lever here to get going the speed and get that start increasing. But I can jump into free run mode by tapping this little road icon down there. What free run mode allows you to do is to simply go forward in the treadmill to speed it up, or go back in the treadmill to slow it back down again. And it's using that sensor I talked about earlier that's right under here to figure out where you're going. So just staying here in the middle, the grade's relatively flat at 1%. My pace, 7.30 or so a mile. And again, just very slight movements moving it forward and back to increase the speed. It's, it feels really natural. Uh, now, what's not gonna be natural is this hill in a second, which is going up. You'll see it start to incline. I think this one tops at about 8%. Don't worry, we got 15% later on. But what's cool though is I just naturally slide back on the treble right now. So just like you would have going up a hill, you're typically gonna slow down a little bit unless you're trying to maintain a very specific pace. I just have slowed down. But if I wanna push it a bit, all I do is just simply slide forward. It's as easy as that. So you can now see as I go around this corner here, the is continuing to climb. You can see it rising down there from the bottom steeper and steeper, and I'm just easing back in the treadmill, just like I would normally do outside, because it's steep and painful. However, the coolest part is once we get to the top of the hill there. So let's fast forward over that. Okay, so we're just at the top here, almost at the very edge. Like any runner, I can see that top. I'm starting to increase my pace a little bit. I know the end's in sight. You can see the gradient start to decrease here as I reach the top, so 6%. Going down slowly, 5%. And probably the most amazing sensation is this right here. Going over the top of this edge, you naturally feel like you want to run faster. Like I'm just going faster because it feels I'm gonna fall down this cliff of a negative percent incline, but I didn't touch anything. And the treble is not controlling speed. I just simply fell down the hill, if you will, just like you would outside. And as I hit this gully right here, the same thing's gonna happen the opposite direction reality is going to set in and I'm going to say, man, nah, I'm going to slow down a little bit because now it's 5%, 8% incline, backing out and slows down again, back at 11%. And I can adjust pretty easily by just simply moving forward a little bit, like you see right here. So I find a pace that's viable. And it's interesting because Zwift and Wahoo together have built this particular core section really to show the treadmill and highlight it. And it's astoundingly addicting how well this works in terms of convincing you that you're going up and down hills. The treadmill itself has a maximum incline as mentioned earlier on at 15% and then a decline at negative 3%. And it doesn't feel like it's only a negative 3%. It feels like it's a lot more than that, partially because of the fact that TV is so close. So if you have a treadmill and a TV, stick them really close like this because it makes it feel like you're just dropping over those edges. Okay, so now's a good time to talk about changing pace with this lever over here. So there's essentially three different options. There's a little bump that you'll see it bumped at five seconds. There's a big bump that bumps at 30 seconds. And then if I hold it, it's gonna go by the second. But this is variable depending on what pace I'm actually running at. So if I go back here to a really slow pace, so now I'm at a walk pace. If I do the big bump, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and so on. So you don't have to sit there in 30 second increments all the way to get the pace you want. Now right now Zwift is controlling the gradient up here. So it's automatically going up and down, but the same concept applies on this side for the gradient paddle in both half and whole percentages. Okay, so here we go to the radio tower. So down this negative 12% grade, and then reality is about to set in here. So I'm just, again, it's all in free run road, free run mode, and as it starts going up, I'm just naturally sliding back to adjust for this. 8%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%. And I can still go forward if I want to and increase the pain and suffering. That feature still works. I might not work, but it works. You can see, I can bring it up 630 miles, 610 a mile, 543 a mile, 530 a mile, 540 a mile. 
and we go all the way up the top of the radio tower. Easy peasy. Now jumping over to the track, there's basically three different ways on the treadmill to control pace. The first is manual control, like you can see I'm doing right here. Uh, the second is automated control, where your structured workout from Zwift has the target paces and will automatically control the treadmill. And then the third is what I've been showing you where the run free mode. Now at first I thought I'd probably want the automated control like I do on an indoor trainer for erg workouts, but I realized you'll see in just a second with the run free mode, it feels way more natural. But as you'll see, I was able to achieve an incredible level of consistency and accuracy in that run free mode nonetheless. Okay, so you can see how the same concept works here on the track. Finishing up this particular recovery interval, I can just start running forward towards the front of the treadmill and it speeds up so that by the time I hit the start of the next interval, I'm right on target there, 11 miles an hour. Easy as that. Didn't have to touch anything. You saw my hands didn't touch anything, just straight into it. And the same concept will apply as I finish the interval. Okay, so here we are 90 seconds later. When I'm done with this interval, I have to do nothing more than just simply slide back towards the back of this treadmill. Even start walking there. Still getting used to trusting the treadmill, but it works. I didn't fly off the back or anything like that. Okay, while I'm editing this, I wanna call it something that just happened there that happened so insanely fast that I didn't even realize it happened that fast while I was running, which is how quickly that stopped in that run free mode. Uh, now note, I went from basically a 530 mile down to walking pace, so a 20 minute mile. And it did that, and depending on how you count it, about two to three seconds, because I transitioned myself through the walk there, versus the Techno Gym run. In that review, I actually timed that exact same pace transition, uh, and it was between 18 and 23 seconds to do. Here, let's watch it again. Simply slide back towards the back of the treadmill. Even start walking there. Still getting used to trusting the treadmill. So again, if you've done intervals on a treadmill before and the whole like slowing it down at the end of each interval thing, you know how insane that just was. And I just wanted to call that out real quick. Okay, so let's talk about integration with apps like Zwift and Peloton and anything else out there, as well as things like watches that may want to connect to the treadmill. Wahoo says they're releasing a public API that allows other app developers to do the same thing. So you could see companies like Fullgaz and Kinomap and others that will be able to control the treadmill in much the same way. They're also supporting the existing standards. So for example, you have Bluetooth FTMS, which is the control standard uh, for treadmills. We saw Peloton last month go ahead and add support for that natively in their app. But the challenge with FTMS, according to Wahoo, is that there's some nuances in the protocol itself around pace conversions that don't make it quite as ideal for some of the high performance aspects of it. So while they do support it natively, they do support it just fine, they're implementing their additional API so that you have more granular control over it. In addition to that, there is built in Ethernet as well as Wi-Fi supporting the existing Wahoo Direct Connect standards, which we've seen on the trainer side side and the bike side for the last couple of years. And they're also looking at enabling AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth smart foot pods. So you can connect to it from any watch that you want, a Garmin watch, a Polar Sunto Coros, whatever you want, just as a standard running foot pod. Speaking of that pace in terms of accuracy, uh, Wahoo says they've got one heck of a motor in here that helps you keep it very, very stable despite higher running weights on it. And as of right now in their testing, they've got about 3% accuracy rate and that's including a runner at max spec. The max spec for a runner in terms of weight is 250 pounds. The Wahoo says they did design it for much higher than that, but that's what the official supported weight is uh, at this point in time. And since we're talking about weight, this unit itself is 275 pounds. Uh, moving it around would be beefy, but there are some wheels on the front there. So two people could basically just grab it from the side of supports and roll it around. They're also looking at other options as well for moving it uh, if you need to move it around your house just on some sort of casters or things like that. And then coming into home here with two final things, uh, the first one is the loudness. I want you to jump back to the section here where I'm running along in the four minute mile pace. So here we are right now. Not only is the laptop stable, I'm at a 4.30 minute mile pace, cruising along, so nothing is like bumping around. And then just listen for a second to the audio. I'm gonna jump off. And you can see how quiet it is, even when I'm not running on it. And then finally, before we talk price, last thing to note is that you can disassemble this if you move. It basically breaks down into about half a dozen pieces. You got the base piece, you got some case covers on both sides, the supports, and then the upper structure right there as well. So you can take it apart if you need to, if you're moving house or whatever the case may be. So 
The big question is, how much is this going to hurt your wallet? And the answer is 5,000 bucks. 5,000 US dollars is their target price point uh, when they start shipping. And they're aiming to start shipping this summer sometime. So summer 2024 uh, in the US. And then they're aiming for another year from that to be able to ship it globally, which is what we've seen Wahoo do actually in the past, the first time they launched their smart bike, uh, started in the US and then kind of expanded out into other markets from there. In addition, Wahoo plans that the installation of this will be done like a white glove service, similar to what we've seen from other treadmill companies as well. It's not quite clear today whether or not that price will be included in the 5,000 bucks or extra, but my guess is if you're spending 5,000 bucks, an extra couple hundred bucks probably isn't the end of the world. Anyways, this is a super interesting treadmill. I am excited to review this properly to get it into the, the DCR cave sometime later on this spring and really put it through its paces. But right now, this is by far the coolest treadmill running experience that I've had. Like just the, the whole free running thing is mind boggling in how natural it feels. Like they're just, there's simply nothing to it. At the moment, you know, in trying it for an hour, I don't have things like data accuracy or long-term thoughts on it. Uh, so I can't really give you many or really any negatives I can think of right now outside of the price. Obviously that's, that's gonna hurt, uh, but like that is, that free run, run free portion is, is super, super cool. Equally as cool though, is if you were to go ahead and hit that subscribe button at the bottom there or the like button, that way it helps support the channel and all the stuff here. With that, have a good one.